During the pre-production phase of this video, I had a completely different intro. I was going to talk about the concept of reboots and use Planet of the Apes to illustrate my point that there are good and bad ways to approach a long dormant franchise. However, once I completed my relatively short playthrough of Battletoads, I went to record a gameplay of other beat em up games I own, such as Scott Pilgrim, Phantom Breaker Battlegrounds, and Streets of Rage. The latter is important because after I recorded bits of gameplay from the classic game, it got me thinking. Streets of Rage 4 came out a few months ago. The series itself has a history that's eerily similar to Battletoads. The Streets of Rage series was popular during the Sega Genesis era between 1991 and 1994. Same story with the Battletoads series. They had games in the same time frame. After that, however, there were no new games released, save for re-releases and compilations and guest appearances in other games over the last few decades. It wouldn't be until 2018 where both series would have long-awaited sequels. Yes, both of them. I decided to give Streets of Rage 4 a try after recording the other three games. One story mode later, I wanted to play some more. It's not the greatest game in the whole world, but I can say with confidence that I had more fun playing Streets of Rage 4 than Battletoads. But how? I also had fun playing Battletoads as well, but compared to Streets of Rage 4, something seemed to be missing. What could it be? Is it the gameplay? The presentation? The story? What? Those are the questions I aim to answer. So, instead of a Battletoads 2020 review, this is a full-on analysis between the Battletoads reboot and Streets of Rage 4. At a glance, the Battletoads and Streets of Rage series seem similar in terms of gameplay. You play as a character traveling from one point of the level to another while beating up enemies along the way. There's no RPG mechanics or infinite lives. It's pure, simple arcade beat em up action. That's where the similarities stop though. The Streets of Rage series are purely arcade beat em up games to the point where it feels vanilla. A basic template for modern beat em up games to use, such as Scott Pilgrim. The term vanilla isn't meant to be derogatory, but rather used to understand where everything came from. This series, along with Battletoads, were a part of the golden age of the beat em up genre so the expectation for a classic series as these are straightforward. This is especially true with Streets of Rage. The gameplay is primitive, but lends itself to be an enjoyable arcade experience. Streets of Rage 4 is still the same classic Streets of Rage gameplay, with a few adjustments made to the overall gameplay experience for a modern audience. You have your normal attacks, specials, throws, and items such as cash, weapons, star pickups, and food in garbage cans. Yeah, that makes sense! What's different are the new mechanics surrounding the combat. Special attacks are powerful variations of normal moves, but cost a bit of your health. The lost health is represented by this green bar. You can regain this health by attacking enemies, but if you get hurt once, that green health is gone. This adds a risk-reward mechanic that makes players think twice about using special moves. Star moves are limited, invincible moves that unleashes a powerful attack. All characters start off with one star move, and more can be found by picking up star move pickups. Every character comes with different move sets. Axel is an all-rounder that focuses on ground combat, while Blaze Fielding isn't strong but has moves that combo into each other, even in the air. My suggestion is to try them all out and see what works, because everyone is viable. Even the boss battles are fun to fight against. Most of them. A majority of the bosses test your metal with two of the bosses being callbacks to the original games, while a rare few aren't as challenging compared to the road to get there. While Streets of Rage is a beat em up game by definition, Battletoads sets itself apart from other games in its genre by adding other gameplay elements in the mix such as racing, platforming, on-rail shooting, among other things. This reboot adds more gameplay elements that were not present in previous games such as the bullet hell sections, quick time events, and even performing menial tasks. thought the promotion was pretty much a guarantee at this point. Then we had that meeting about the email. Ugh. The combat is nearly identical to the previous games, save for a few changes. The Toads are able to do more things during combat such as transitioning from one plane of existence with their tongue to spitting gum at their enemies to temporarily immobilize them. Those extra options are not limited to only mobility, as combat is given an upgrade as well. Instead of one attack button, you're given three different attack buttons with different properties. There's a standard attack, a launcher attack, and a smash hit. 
You can combo into one another, but only a few of these toads are more capable of performing combos than others. Like Streets of Rage 4, the Battletoads characters have different attributes during combat. Rash is an all-rounder character. Pimple is a slow heavy hitter who could hit like a freight train, sometimes literally. And Zitz is a quick fighter capable of performing high count combos. There's a reason why I mentioned during combat because in other modes such as quick time events, platforming, and space shooting, the distinction is meaningless. Speaking of which, the other gameplay elements are fun and challenging in their own right. They serve as a break between the beat em up sections of the game. My favorite being the bullet hell segments. They deliver just the right amount of challenge without feeling too frustrating to complete. If anything, both games provide enough challenge on normal difficulty, however one challenges your skill with a singular aspect of the game, while another challenges you with a plethora of different genres. The original Battletoads game had visuals that were mind-blowing in 1991 on the NES. Can you think of any other game on this system that simulated 3D more effectively? There's not that many, at least to this scale. Fast forward to the reboot, and the game traded the 90s aesthetics for hand-drawn visuals reminiscent of a Saturday morning cartoon. There's absolutely no denying that there's a lot of effort put in animation. All the characters' animations flow well, with no skips in between frames. But the real issue I have in regards to presentation is the art style. Let me explain something before you make any assumptions. One of the few genuine surprises I had the pleasure of playing over the last few years was the Shantae series, notably Half Genie Hero. The game oozes with color and unforgettable personality. I don't have a problem with colorful games. Where I draw the line is that these changes go in the opposite direction than the original games. It's like taking Teen Titans and changing what it originally was. Oh. My point is, instead of an action hero approach that the classic Battletoads games took, the developers and artists opted for a more modern take, reminiscent of current kids shows. That's not to say this art style is the worst thing ever put on screen. Worse examples are out in the wild. I just don't believe it's the correct approach. How do I know this? Let's take a quick look at the arcade version of Battletoads. It does resemble a cartoon, but upon closer examination, the game is pretty violent compared to the reboot. I understand that visuals like this don't fit the current standards of kids' media, but at the very least, make the enemies a teeny bit menacing? Their designs look like toys that belong in a 99 cent store. We're puppets! I am not a puppet. Obey the champions! Yeah, that's just like one of a thousand phrases. Okay, let's talk about character designs for a bit because I got a bone to pick about that. And this isn't even including the design of the Dark Queen. In 2016, one of the Battletoads, Rash, became a guest character in Killer Instinct. His character design, while goofy looking, is semi-grotesque, but it had a bit of charm for a six-foot bipedal amphibian. Personally, I like it. If Battletoads had a reboot with this character design, I wouldn't mind it, because it stands out on its own. The designs we got for the actual reboot is... only okay. I don't hate it, but it feels too clean for a game called Battletoads. I don't want to make it sound like I absolutely hate this game because there are some elements that I like in regards to presentation. I like the callbacks to previous games, whether it's taking a past level and putting a new spin on it or using certain moves. The developers understood why people like the past games. Meanwhile, the music for this game is great. The heavy metal soundtrack that plays through the game not only stands on its own, but draws heavy influence from the past games. total headbangers in my books. There is only one problem, and it stems from an earlier critique. The tone. Don't get me wrong, 
The composer for the soundtrack, David Houdsden, did a fantastic job of recreating and updating the old soundtrack for the reboot, but I don't think the cleaner style and slightly lighthearted tone of the game meshes well with this heavy metal soundtrack. Well, what about Streets of Rage 4? What kind of style and tone did it adopt? I think this game's opening should show you exactly what to expect. The environmental detail on the backgrounds and foregrounds look amazing. All of the returning characters are updated but remain faithful to their original designs, while the new characters are a welcome addition. According to the art director of Streets of Rage 4, all of the playable characters have about 1,000 frames of animation, while the enemies only have about 300 to 400 frames. Ever since Skullgirls, I had a deep appreciation of 2D animation in video games, so hats off to the animators. The music, much like Battletoads, are callbacks to the original series but taken to a different direction, and in my opinion, it's the best soundtrack to any beat-em-up game I've ever listened to. It's undoubtedly Streets of Rage, but compared to the previous games, this soundtrack has a combination of dubstep, hip-hop, and jazz, and I'm more than ecstatic with that. Even as I'm writing this script, I'm still head-bobbing to the beat of the end credits theme, which acts as an homage to the first game's main theme. The one track that really stuck to me, however, has to go to the theme of the final level. Normally, I will let this song play as I stay silent for a couple of seconds, but in this case, I'm making a rare exception. I want to illustrate why this is the best piece in the soundtrack, and in order to do so, I'll need to come back in and out to explain some things. It all comes down to context. Before the start of the final stage, the plane you're in from the previous level crashes into an island, which is the setting of the final level. You start off with half of your health gone, or lower in harder difficulties. The music starts off with a strong chorus, as you're desperately trying to regain your lost health while waves of enemies attempt to finish you off. As you approach the gates to the castle, the music changes from a chorus number to a dubstep track with swarms of various enemies and a mini-boss attempting to hinder your progress. As soon as you think the worst has ended, the game throws a curveball, and not only does it introduce a brand new enemy this late in the game, but the music intensifies in ways the previous room didn't. Once those enemies are dealt with, the music slightly climbs in intensity with wave after wave of big dudes. As soon as the final enemy is defeated, the music finishes strong. Just describing this piece was a journey of its own. Major props go to the various composers who worked on the game 
because they made a soundtrack that sounds and feels like Streets of Rage. Both series had stories that were about as engaging as a 90s action film or TV show. If you don't believe me, try this on for size. This city was once a happy, peaceful place. Until one day, a powerful secret criminal organization took over. This vicious syndicate soon had control of the government and even the police force. The city had become a center of violence and crime where no one is safe. Amid this turmoil, a group of determined young police officers has sworn to clean up this city. Among them are Adam Hunter, Alex Stone, and Blaze Fielding. They are willing to risk anything, even their lives, on the streets of rage. You can't get any more 90s than that. Okay, maybe except for the Battletoads pilot. Here's everything you'll need to live the good life in Oxnard. Cool clothes, high-toned sneakers, a tape player, some heavy metal, a surfboard, some tan oil, oh, and some organic bean sprouts. With time, stories and themes that were acceptable in the 90s would be either cheesy or morally questionable for today's standards, to put it lightly. This is especially the case for Battletoads' story. While I did say that Battletoads is a reboot, it's technically a reboot by name only. The story is a continuation from the last game 26 years ago. The story is about the Battletoads emerging from a bunker they were found inside of for the last 26 years. From there, the Battletoads head off to find the Dark Queen, the villain from the last game, and decided to work together to defeat a much larger force of evil. The humor is mostly missed than hit, and that's due to the writing playing things safe. They range from producing a chuckle or two at best and an eye roll at worst. The jokes are mostly self-referential, sometimes at a character's expense. I solved it! Solve what? Come in, brothers. Are we brothers? We never talk about it. Doesn't matter. Take a seat, I'll stand. No, no, no. You stand, I'll sit. Everyone stands. I mean, come on. Why you gotta do them like that? The pacing of the story is fine up until the third act. From there, the game switches back and forth from space shooting to platforming several times with a quick time event before the final space shooting segment. Every other act has been well paced aside from this very lengthy act. Even the older games learn to evenly pace the levels with different gameplay elements. From a story perspective, it makes sense. But from a gameplay perspective, it feels like unnecessary padding in order to extend the game's already short runtime. That's something I also want to mention. In my first playthrough, I completed this game on Toad difficulty, the game's standard difficulty, and it only took me three and a half hours to complete it. Keep in mind, I usually take my time with games and try to find as many collectibles and secrets as I can on the first run. I even screwed up a couple of times during my playthrough, but I believe if I really tried it on my later runs with the padding removed, that runtime would be much shorter. Yes, Battletoads has a hardcore fan base, but to say that it's a serious franchise is... not an insult, but a disservice to other franchises. Hell, the Stamper Brothers, the creators of Battletoads, stated that this series was created in response to the growing popularity of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This series isn't like Mario, Legend of Zelda, or Mega Man, nor was it ever trying to be like them. It was a series in the 90s that attempted to copy what was popular at the time that happened to turn out to be great games with a hardcore following. Just like this version of Battle Toads. That's right! The original values of what made the Battletoads games become the way they were was never lost in the first place. Really think about it. The uninspired character designs, the humor of the time, the Saturday morning cartoon art style, all of these elements are what is currently popular today in the year 2020 in pop culture. Jesus Christ, that was a major big brain moment that I'll probably never recreate in my life. Sorry, future me. I really need to learn to finalize my scripts before recording. Anywho, one would think that Streets of Rage 4 would suffer from the same fate because it's been so long since the last game, but interestingly enough, it sticks to its guns and takes a serious approach to storytelling. The game takes place 10 years after the events of the third game, where peace was restored after the fall of Mr. X and the Syndicate. Now, the descendants of Mr. X, the Y-Twins, are set to take over the once peaceful city. 
Returning characters such as Axel Stone and Blaze Fielding, along with new characters Cherry Hunter and Floyd Araya, embark on a new adventure to stop the Wyatt Twins on the Streets of Rage. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! The story isn't voice acted like the Battletoads reboot, but it instead tells the story with stills that feels like reading through a comic book. The pacing is well done. However, the only complaint I have is the seventh stage, the Sky Train level. Compared to the rest of the stages, this is the shortest level in the game. I don't want to make the assumption that this level was added to bump up the runtime, but something to consider is that this stage's boss is not only a repeat of Stage 4's boss, but also includes the Stage 2 boss as well. It's extremely far from the worst example of reusing assets from a previous level, <coughs> but it does fall slightly short from absolute perfection. Well, not everything can be winners. Arcade games compared to narrative-driven games are inherently replayable. The latter is almost like reading a book from beginning to end. It's a linear experience that, while enjoyable, doesn't lend itself to repeated sessions. Arcade games don't work like that. The aim of these kind of games back in the day are all about earning points to earn the highest score possible, thus giving players a reason to go back and play some more. As mentioned before, Streets of Rage 4 takes the arcade concept and embraces it. After every stage, you are given a letter grade based on your performance. This is dependent on your health, lives, combo length, time, and leftover star power tokens. All these points build up to this bar, which I'll explain what this is in a bit. After you complete the story, other modes of play are unlocked, such as a boss rush mode, and even an arcade mode, where you're given only one chance to play through the story mode. When you run out of lives, you're done. There's even online multiplayer where you and three other players can work together in the story or battle against each other in battle mode. That's not all. That bar I mentioned earlier also unlocks special characters such as the Streets of Rage 1 version of Axel Stone. Not only does this character come with a moveset that's reminiscent of the original game, special included, but the character is a faithful recreation, pixels and all. Much like my stance with Halo content on Forza Horizon 4, I love it when developers go the extra mile to add content that's completely unnecessary. Because it shows me that Dotemu, the devs behind Streets of Rage 4, have an appreciation and passion for the series. Meanwhile, Battletoads has... <clears throat> I said Battletoads has... Wait, seriously? Outside of collectibles, there doesn't seem to be that much in terms of replay value. Yes, the gameplay is fun the first time around, but in repeated playthroughs, it feels like a chore, especially when there's nothing exciting to unlock compared to its competitor. There's not even an online multiplayer mode for Battletoads. Couch co-op only, or GTFO. For the most part, the Battletoads reboot given this information is only worth a single playthrough. When completing Battletoads, my original aim was to review it and compare it to other classic and modern games in its genre. After grabbing footage of the classic Streets of Rage games and its latest entry while doing research on both series' history, I've decided to change my approach on this video. Both games aren't that different on the surface, but when it came time for their new entries, they couldn't be further apart from each other with their execution. Battletoads became a reintroduction of the series to a newer audience, while Streets of Rage 4 is a continuation of the series. The question remains, which revival is the better one? Unfortunately, my answer is complicated. There are many things to like about both entries, along with some drawbacks. Some are obviously more drastic than others. Battletoads 2020 has reignited my interest in the beat-em-up genre. I like the combat, animation, gameplay variety, and callbacks to the past games, but the art style, pacing, and overall tone are things I can't agree with. Not having any online multiplayer or valuable replayability didn't help matters. Streets of Rage 4, funny enough, has more positive things I could think of than negatives. This sequel has the tone, art style, gameplay, and music down to a T. Sure, it's a bit difficult for newcomers to dip their toes into, and there are a few elements that bring down the experience a peg or two, but I'd argue that players could find satisfaction in its gameplay. 
As I start wrapping up this video, I may have come across the idea that I absolutely hated the Battletoads reboot for not being like the old games, but I don't. I mean, before playing through the Streets of Rage games, I thought the reboot was kind of fun for what it currently is. Of course I expected more out of it, but considering how other reboots of classic franchises fared in the past, I'd say that it could have been worse. In fact, I'd say the spirit of the 90s Battletoads games was not lost in this reboot. I don't have to like it, but I can understand the intent behind the creative process of this game. In my personal opinion, Streets of Rage 4 was the beat-em-up I was looking for, but I can understand why people would like Battletoads. It's a beat-em-up game with a variety of gameplay elements that was handled by a developer that somewhat understood the Battletoads games. My hope is that these two games can spark renewed interest in the beat-em-up genre, a genre that is sorely lacking as of late. In closing, my heart says that Streets of Rage 4 is the clear winner in this battle, but Battletoads should also be given as much attention, because there isn't anything like it in the market. Pick your poison. Either way, you won't regret it. Thank you.